السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقى قولي أما بعد We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We truly thank him that he allowed us to have this series talking about his beautiful names What an honor is it to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala What an honor is it for me to talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making me feel very shy and humble that who am I, who am I to talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth. But we try our best to use whatever Allah said in the Quran, whatever was mentioned in the sunnah, to get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better and better, to fulfill the purpose of the series as we mentioned earlier on the first episode, that the more we get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we love him. And I ask you by Allah, if you're among those who've been watching the series from the day one, do you feel that your strength in terms of love towards Allah has increased. For the more you know Allah, the more you will love Him. The easier and the sweeter it is to worship Him, the happier you will be, inshallah, in this life and the afterlife. Inshallah, we're going to discuss one of the very beautiful, scary, merciful, tough names. It's a mix of both, but it depends. And which side are you, you will gain. So if you're in that side that you were oppressed, then bi'ithnillah, that name is so sweet and merciful and kind towards you. And if you are amongst the oppressors, then that name is very rough and rigid to those people. What name do you think it is? It is Allah's beautiful name, Al-Jabbar. I dedicate that name, Al-Jabbar, to every brother, to every sister with a broken heart, to everyone that is going through pain. I dedicate this for every orphan that had his money or her money eaten by other people. I dedicate this talk for every young brother and sister that has been bullied. I dedicate this talk about Allah's beautiful name, Al-Jabbar, the mender of broken hearts. That's his name for that part, Al-Jabbar, the mender of broken hearts for every sister that has been slandered in the community. People talking bad about her, like Aisha radiallahu anha, when she was slandered and Allah showed her innocence in Surah An-Nur. I dedicate this for every brother or sister that went through a divorce and people are talking trash about them and with them with their broken hearts. I dedicate this name of Allah Al-Jabbar and this understanding and the material we're about to discuss right now for every spouse that is oppressed, for every business partner which the other partner took their money and stole and ran away. I dedicate this talk to anyone, whether I addressed you or not, Anyone that is in pain, that has a broken heart, who do you have other than Allah, the mender of broken hearts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Jabbar. It is so sad how many of us have lived our lives without going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Jabbar. Nothing, brothers and sisters, will I pay attention, nothing would make you feel better as much and as lasting as knowing Allah al-Jabbar, going to Him with your broken heart, asking Him, Ya Jabbar, mend my broken heart. Today's name is a mix of both the other part, the fear part, then Allah al-Jabbar, the forceful, the compeller, the one who will show his punishment to those who broke other people's hearts. This is the other side of Allah al-Jabbar. Many people look at Allah al-Jabbar, look at that name from a very fearful perspective. That is correct, but that's not the only side, but anyone that is in pain, wallahi, who do we have other than Allah al-Jabbar? Brothers and sisters, the problem that we went through and we, some of us do go through is that our speed towards seeking Allah's support is relatively slow. So we go to that person, we go to that person, we try to do this, we try to do that, and the last thing that comes to mind, oh, let me go ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Jabbar to help me alleviate that pain in my heart. And the other problem is that our certainty before, during, and after going to Allah al-Jabbar is not so strong, is relatively weak. Is, that, is Allah really going to help me from this problem? Is Allah really going to mend my broken heart? Yes, He will. 
I'll share with you this quick story and example I experienced at a doctor's office when one of the Muslim people was waiting. Was waiting for their name to be called so the doctor can check on them. So as I was discussing their state, how they feel, their health, etc. I asked that person, did you make dua to elevate that pain? Did you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And they said, subhanAllah, no I didn't. How can you forget subhanAllah? How can someone in pain, how can someone whose their heart is being ripped apart and torn apart, whatever their reason may be, how can they not go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make dua to him to mend that broken heart? Brothers and sisters, you know why this is of a serious concern? Because had we not go to Allah very fast, to Allah al-Jabbar, to mend our broken heart and pain, we will seek avenues, we will seek ways to make ourselves feel better that are temporary and might make things even worse. Pay attention. Had we not go to Allah al-Jabbar and seek other avenues to comfort ourselves, some of these avenues might make things even worse. Just like subhanAllah, how this very respectful sister in the community, very respectful people know for akhlaq and manners, but this sister was caught smoking one time. And she was asked, why are you smoking? SubhanAllah, why are you destroying your health? You're still young and so on. She said, my parents fight all day and all night. And I feel hopeless. And I feel helpless towards making things better. So I went and sought smoking. Perhaps, just like what people say, it makes me feel better. I will start smoking. And she said, now I'm addicted to it, subhanAllah. And did it solve the problem? Wallahi, it didn't solve. Rather, it made things worse. So brothers and sisters, what I'm worried about is that we will not seek the proper strategy to leave the problem we're at, to make ourselves feel comfortable. Just like a group of people that are in a building and that building goes into fire. So the fire is blazing all over the place and the people die. Not because of the fire, not because of the smoke which makes them suffocate. But you know why they die? Because they all jammed through the same door and they stepped over one another and they killed each other. So people make things, subhanAllah, the solution of your pain is right there. You sought another solution. You didn't think properly. You're always taught when there's fire, don't use the elevator. And how many times have you heard this? Go to Allah in a problem. And how many times did we overlook it? Wallahi, Allah is the only one that can mend our broken heart because His name is Al-Jabbar. And how, just like how there's a fire exit strategy, we have a hardship exit strategy which is to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the golden rule is this brothers and sisters this is the golden rule it is impossible wallahi impossible for me and you to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-jabbar with a broken heart and he does not end up mending this broken heart wallahi it's impossible once again why because he called himself al-jabbar brothers and sisters when it comes to the mending process there's this physical mending and a psychological mending. You have a broken bone and a broken heart. When it comes to the broken bone, just to illustrate how Allah, yes, just like how Allah mends the broken bones, He can mend the broken heart. SubhanAllah, the best people to know Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-Jabbar, are the orthopedics, the doctors that are responsible taking care of the bones. They're the best ones to know that. All what they do, and SubhanAllah, right now I should have a broken finger and I took the splint out so when I record it doesn't show what happened all what the doctor did to me when I came with my broken finger is that he said wear this piece so I wear the piece then what nothing that's it just wear the piece okay what about my broken bones they will mend by themselves no they will not mend by themselves it is Allah al-Jabbar the one who will mend this broken bone right here Allah al-Jabbar when he created us he has these bones, he has a bones forming cells. And when we get to a certain age, some people say for the guys 21 years old, for the girls about 18 years old, and we stop growing. Our bones stop growing. So Allah tells these cells to stop. And had we not have these cells stop growing, then some of us will become giants and we will die for how big our bodies are and our heart is small compared to operating that body. So Allah tells the cells, stop at that age enough and then maybe many years later one of our bones break and Allah al-Jabbar tells these cells to come back to life be strong revive work again and mend that bone that is broken and once the bone is mended Allah tells the cells to rest and stop 
Wallahi, brothers and sisters, just like how Allah mends that broken bone, Allah is capable of mending that broken heart. SubhanAllah. Look at the story of the mother of Musa alayhi salam. Fir'aun had a dream or was inspired or was taught through the old scriptures that this oppressive leader Fir'aun will be taken off by one of the children of Bani Israel. So Fir'aun became so scared and irritated. So he made a command that every boy male from Bani Israel, the day they're born, they shall be killed. That's the rule. And Allah willed that the mother of Musa at that time, she becomes pregnant. Subhanallah. Not a coincidence. There's no such thing as coincidence. Allah says, A'udhu bi rajim, Bismillah rahim Inna kulla shay'in khalaqnahu bi qadar. Everything. Indeed, all things has already been decreed. Subhanallah. So she's pregnant. Do you think she was making dua? Ya Allah, make it a female, not a male. Allahu A'lam. But definitely she was worried. I know you might have heard this story many, many times, but I want you to please live the example, live the story, and think how does the mother of Musa's feeling? All these women that are having baby boys, they're trying to hide the baby. And the soldiers are walking carefully, soldiers of Fir'aun, hearing, is there any house where the baby is crying? Why? Because the moment they hear that, they would knock on the door. And they would try to open the door forcefully. And had they seen the mother holding a baby, and they would say, what's that baby? Is it a boy or a girl? And she says, oh, don't worry about it. Or whatever the conversation. It's a boy. Then the whole family surrounds the mother and the baby so the soldiers don't take the baby away. Can you please imagine that pain? How much are they crying? All of that. And then they say, give us the baby. They check the baby out. Perhaps they even beat the father and the mother so they can take the baby. And lo and behold, had the baby actually is a boy, they will come and slaughter the boy in front of the eyes of the mother. Allah says, They slaughter, literally slaughter the baby in front of the mother, subhanAllah, and they leave the females alive. Brothers and sisters, who do we have other than Al-Jabbar? The mother of Musa with a broken heart, with all of this. What will she do? We will know, inshallah, after that short break. In the meantime, make dua to Allah Al-Jabbar to mend your broken heart. جزاكم الله خير. I'll see you shortly. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Iman is the secret of Allah in His creation. That which he places into the hearts of those that he loves. He loves. He loves. He loves. He loves. Once it glows, nothing is stronger that can drive a person, and nothing is sweeter that a person can experience. It's a glimpse of paradise that you see with the eyes of your heart. Unlock your Iman with my new series, Imanology, The Fundamentals of Faith. Enrich your Iman by following the factors that would open the door of eternal blessings for all believers in Imanology, the study of Iman, tomorrow at 5 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9 a.m. India on Peace TV. Where truth is hidden, Misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulated scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth? And who has the courage to expose it? Because it's your right to know the truth. Right. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik tomorrow 
at 9 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair for being patient and tuning in after the short break, continuing talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Jabbar. And we mentioned about the mother of Musa, how she was pregnant, and the soldiers are passing by every house possible. Whenever they hear a baby, they come, knock on the door, check the baby out. If it was a boy, they would literally slaughter the boy in front of the family. Very painful scene, subhanAllah. We ask Allah's refuge from being in such state, Amin Rabbil Alameen. With all of this happening, the mother of Musa delivers a baby. Lo and behold, that baby is a boy. It is Musa alayhi salam. You can imagine how scared she may feel that now soon the soul is going to knock on the door the moment the baby cries. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired the mother of Musa to do three things and promises her the fourth thing. The first thing Allah says in the Quran, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَرْضِعِيهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired the mother of Musa to breastfeed Musa alayhi salam. But it doesn't really make sense. Why? Because soon Musa is going to be killed. Soon the soul is going to come and slaughter Musa alayhi salam. But Allah said, surrender to the order of Allah. Surrender and submit. Listen, go and feed Musa alayhi salam. Breastfeed him. Then Allah, number two, He says, فَإِذَا خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ فَأَلْقِيهِ فِي الْيَمْ And if you fear over Musa alayhi salam, then throw him, toss him into the river. Wallahi, it's something that is very difficult to comprehend. What do you mean throw him in the river? Allah said, if you're worried that soldiers are about to knock on the door, and that's it, there's no way out, then toss him into the river. And subhanAllah, soon after she breastfed him, and she was so scared, Allah said, number three, inspired her, وَلَا تَخَافِي وَلَا تَحْزَنِي And don't fear and don't grieve. How can she not fear and grieve? What is the assurance? Why Allah? Why will I not fear and grieve? Because number four, Allah promised, إِنَّا رَادُّوهُ إِلَيْكِ وَجَاعِلُوهُ مِنَ الْمُرْسِلِينَ We will bring him back to you. It's a promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَجَاعِلُوهُ مِنَ الْمُرْسِلِينَ Not just going to return him back to you, but we're also going to make your son, Musa alayhi salam, a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With this happening, you can imagine the news comes, soldiers are knocking on the door, mother of Musa gets so scared, she hears the order, she gets so worried, she fulfills the command of Allah, tosses her baby into the river, and now the soldiers come and see her, and she tries her best not to show any signs, not to show that the baby is right there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَأَصْبَحَ فُؤَادُ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ فَارِغًا and the heart of the mother of Musa became empty, became empty. She became so traumatized. You do this to her, she might not even blink. So sad over her son. Then in Karat la tubdi bih, she was so close to say, this is my baby. She was so close to even look at the river, but she did not. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَوْلَا أَنْ رَبَطْنَا عَلَىٰ قَلْبِهَا لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Had it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not tie the heart of the mother of Musa, for her to be amongst the believers because the mother of Musa, perhaps she was so close as Allah said in Kadat to even look at the river. Why? Because if she looks at the river, then eventually the soldiers will try to look at the same place the mother is looking at. And when they look at the river and they see like a bucket or a basket that holds a baby, they would rush to that baby and know that that was the baby of that mother. So she tries her best to hold herself, not to look at him, subhanAllah. With that being said, this baby goes and surfaces around the house and the mansion of Fir'aun. Allah says, فَالْتَقَطَهُ آلُ فِرْعَوْنَ The family of Fir'aun saw that baby landing right in front of the house. So Fir'aun and his family grab that baby and they take him inside. Now what is the conversation that takes place? A baby boy, definitely go and kill him. But Allah wills that the wife of Fir'aun وَقَالَتِ امْرَأَةُ فِرْعَوْنَ And the wife of Fir'aun said, and then the baby landed in front of the house of Fir'aun. Lo and behold, the family of Fir'aun, what are they going to do? Are they going to slaughter the baby? It's a boy. Definitely they will do that. But Allah willed. The wife of Fir'aun, she feels attached to the baby. And she says, وَقَالَتِ امْرَأَةُ فِرْعَوْنَ قُرَّةُ عَيْنٍ لِّي وَلَكَ لَا تَقْتُلُوهُ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعْنَا O Fir'aun, 
let this boy be the coolness of our eyes, of my eyes, for my eyes and your eyes. Don't kill him. Perhaps this boy might benefit us. أو نتخذه ولدا or we can adopt him as a child وهم لا يشعرون and they do not know that this boy will soon be a prophet and Fir'aun accepts and he says okay whatever we'll take that boy we'll adopt him whatsoever nothing is a coincidence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills everything to happen with this being said the mother of Musa tells her daughter وقالت لأخته قصي the mother of Musa told her daughter go follow every step of Musa alayhi salam See exactly where did he go and what's happening. So that smart daughter of the mother of Musa, who is the sister of Musa alayhi salam, she searches, where is Musa? And then some nurses say that she is able to hear the crying of Musa alayhi salam from the mansion and she can see that the women are leaving the house and the mansion looking for someone. What are they looking for? The sister of Musa is asking them, what is going on? They tell her, there's a baby boy. We're trying to breastfeed him, but he's not accepting. Allah said in the Quran, وَحَرَّمْنَا عَلَيْهِ الْمَرَاضِعَ مِنْ قَبْلِ And Allah made it haram for anyone to be able to breastfeed Musa. Now we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed that only the mother of Musa breastfeeds him, subhanAllah. But let's see, is that going to happen? Then the sister of Musa, she told these ladies that were running around. She said, Hal adullukum? Shall I tell you of a house that can take care of Musa alayhi salam? There's a woman, there's a family that can do that. They said, yes, of course, bring that lady. Who do you think it is? She said, the house is right there. So they knocked on the door and the mother of Musa opened. Maybe she's worried, maybe she's crying. They tell her, there's a baby boy in the mansion of Pharaoh. Can you come and breastfeed him? And then she says, me? She said, yes, can you come and do that? Then she said, yes, sure. Maybe there was a sign from the daughter of mother of Musa that says, go for it, go for it. Allahu A'lam. Maybe there's a communication, a wink or so. So the mother of Musa accepts the offer and she goes all the way to the mansion of Pharaoh. She goes there and I want you to imagine. She's walking on the footsteps. Lo and behold, and she sees her son, Musa salam, right there. And the lady is around. And the wife of Pharaoh saying, come on, ma'am, please rush, breastfeed our baby. Please come, maybe he will breastfeed from you. We were advised to visit you. Perhaps you're able to do that. Then she grabs Musa alayhi salam and she holds him right to her chest and she breastfeeds him. And guess what happens? Musa accepts and he breastfeeds from the mother of Musa alayhi salam. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allah al-Jabbar. When she fulfilled the inspiration, when she heard the order of Allah to toss him in the river, to breastfeed him, وَلَا تَخَافِي وَلَا تَحْزَنِي Don't be scared, don't be worried. إِنَّا رَادُّهِ Like we will return him back to you. You see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fulfilled his promise and now the mother of Musa is not just breastfeeding him, she's getting paid for it and she's eating from the house, from the mansion of Pharaoh. Subhanallah. Allah said, فَرَدَدَنَاهُ إِلَىٰ أُمِّهِ كَيْ تَقَرَّ عَيْنُهَا وَلَا تَحْزَنْ and we have returned the baby to the mother of Musa. So she shall not grieve again. وَلَا تَحْزَنْ تَقَرَّ عَيْنُهَا And her eyes become cool and rest. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلِتَعْلَمَ أَنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقَّ And so she can know. And so all of us can know that the promise of Allah is the absolute truth. Absolute truth, subhanAllah. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But sadly, Many people do not know Allah is al-Jabbar. Many people don't go to Allah with confidence. So me and you shall go to Allah with confidence, with whatever pain. So we shall go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with confidence, go to Allah al-Jabbar with whatever pain in our hearts and say, Ya Jabbar, Ya Jabbar, mend my broken heart. Whatever case you may go through. Well, it's something very important we need to note from the story. If you look at the surah that includes all of these ayat, you would know that this surah talks about a huge thing, a problem, a conflict between Pharaoh and the nation of Bani Israel, a big conflict between the oppressor and those who are oppressed in a big magnitude. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention the story of a woman that we don't even know her name? And why all these details, how she felt sad and Allah returned the baby back to her? Why? For Allah to show me and you 
that a woman that is not known by the community, a woman that perhaps no one knows her name, with a broken heart, Allah values her state, and Allah is willing to mend her broken heart had she go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah doesn't just focus on big cases, but even on small cases, just go to Allah and He will mend your broken heart. There's much more to discuss inshallah, so please stay tuned for the next episode where we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Jabbar with more examples, more real life stories of how people that were having a broken heart, they went to Allah, Allah, Allah mended their broken heart. So Jazakumullah khair, please go to Allah, ask Ya Allah, Ya Allah, mend my broken heart and enjoy the sweetness. Wallahi, this might be the best and most beautiful two rak'ahs in your life, the day you're in pain. And I'm sure many of those that experience this know exactly what I'm talking about. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah bless you. I love all the believers from the brothers and sisters of the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll see you next episode, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.